What's going on guys? Welcome back to United View. Some breaking news coming in the last couple of minutes and it's not the news that many people would have wanted to have heard and it has been actually confirmed now by multiple parties and that is that Sheikh Jassim has had another bid rejected by the Glazer family and he has withdrawn from the takeover process. As I mentioned, this is big developing and breaking news so if I'm kind of scattered and keep looking to my left here, it's because I'm getting more information as it breaks uh, all over social media at the moment. So first of all, it was a story that was broken and it's exclusive by Fabrizio Romano, who has reported an exclusive saying that Sheikh Jassim has held further discussions with the Glazer family to buy 100% of Manchester United. Sheikh Jassim's proposition has been rejected again by the Glazer family. As a result, Sheikh Jassim has informed the Glazers he's ready to withdraw from the process. Now, when I first read that and I saw a lot of people saying, oh, he's withdrawn, I went, well, maybe not. That's a bit of a step too far because it says that he's ready to, ready to withdraw. But since then, it's been confirmed by multiple parties. Romano's exclusive uh, continues by saying that um, it was uh, his new bid, Sheikh Jasmine's bid. We don't know the amount or anything like that, but it said that he presented a fully cash bid, clearing all old debt with zero new debt for 100% of the club, that being Manchester United. Sheikh Jasmine's team have declined to comment on this new site in quotes confidentiality restrictions, but have confirmed now they've withdrawn from the process. Now, it's not just, it must be stressed, it's not just for Richard Romano saying this, it's everyone that is saying this now. Rob Dawson from ESPN has also said, Sheikh Jassim has withdrawn from the process to buy Manchester United. It was just confirmed also by Mike Keegan, suggesting that his sources are saying the same thing. He has just tweeted three minutes ago saying, Breaking can confirm Qataris. Sheikh Jassim has withdrawn his offer for Manchester United. So that is the big developing and breaking news right now, is that Sheikh Jassim, he put in another bid, as we kind of expected him to. We did expect that he was going to put in a new bid uh, because of this development when it came to Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos uh, restructuring their offer, going for 25% of Manchester United involving the minority shareholders of the club. We had heard it was reported by Bloomberg just a few days ago that this new bid from Ineos was going to be discussed at a upcoming board meeting as soon as the next few days. And it was somewhat anticipated and it was even said in this Bloomberg, Bloomberg article that Qatari Sheikh, ja uh, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani was it could put in another bid and not expected, but they thought that he could certainly and he could raise his offer. He has. It's been rejected, uh, rejected and because of that, he's withdrawn from the process. So the Qatari dream, it's over. It's done. Um, unless, you know, unless, <laughs> I don't know unless what, but it's over. It's done. Um, I've just seen Fabrizio Romano has just again tweeted in the last couple of seconds. So as I mentioned, apologies for this being quite scattered because this is what it's, it's going to be. So... Uh, Romano has just tweeted 40 seconds ago saying the Glazers informed uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Glazers informed of Sheikh Jassim's decision. He has withdrawn from the process. His final bid um, is understood to be almost double the $3.5 billion market valuation. $1.5 billion extra investment was planned. I mean, here we go. I'm going to have to now do dollars to pounds because this is the problem with this whole process. We've got different currencies going on. So if it was... Let's say it says almost three uh, double three point five billion dollars, uh, which is what let's say let's say it's seven billion dollars. So seven one two three. That's what that's cl it's close to six billion. It's not exactly, but it's cl it's it's almost it's almost. We know the Glazers are looking for six billion pounds. It's close. It's probably as close as they're going to get. The club is massively overvalued. Um, the, the the amount that the Glazers are looking for is ridiculous, frankly, uh, because, again, the market cap is something like, was it, $3.5 billion, $3 billion is what the club is worth. They're looking for double, they're looking for over double that. Sheikh Jassim has offered close to double of the market valuation, and the Glazers have still said no. And then guess what? He said, you know what? I'm done with this then. And you know what? I don't blame him. I don't blame him because this whole process is a complete and total farce. It's a complete and total joke. We are sat here nearly a year, a year into this process, and we shouldn't be shocked or we shouldn't be surprised by any of this because if the Glazers wanted to accept the Qatari offer, they would have done it a long time ago when there was only one offer realistically on the table. And that only offer that was on the table for a period of time was Sheikh Jassim's offer of over 5 billion quid. They didn't do anything. 
They sat silent for months. They sat on their hands doing nothing. And in reality, what they were doing during that period of time was talking to INEOS, talking to the minority shareholders, or just waiting, waiting, talking to the rain group saying, hey, keep talking, keep talking to Sir Jim Ratcliffe, keep talking to INEOS, see if they can figure it out. Because there's only one offer that they wanted. They wanted power. It's not even necessarily totally about money involved in all of this. It's about well, partially money, but also power. The offer they like the most, and this is why I was saying this the other day, the offer they like the most is where they get money, but they also keep power. And realistically now, the only offer or offers that are on this table are for minority shareholdings. That's it. Even if it's not Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe, it's Carlisle or it's Elliot. So basically, we're sticking around. They're sticking around for the future. Great. What's going to even happen with Sir Jim Ratcliffe's money that gets put into it? Nothing. Nothing. Because again, it's going to go to buy out maybe some of the Glazer siblings, go out to buying some of, out some of the minority shareholders. They won't have any influence. They'll have 25% of Manchester United. They won't make the key big decisions. Where's that $1.5 billion going to go? Not into the club. Is it going to go to paying off any of the debt? Probably not. Is it going to go into fixing the stadium? Probably not. Is it going to go to fixing the training ground? Probably not. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So what we're saying here is after a year, after close to 12 months of nonsense, boy who cried wolf bullshit, we end up in a final situation where nothing has changed. Nothing has improved. Nothing will get better apart from the Glazers' pocket. They get 1.5 billion quid. Good for them. And us fans have to just sit and deal with mediocrity. And if they want to try and suggest as well that, well, now that this takeover thing's sorted, now things are going to improve on the pitch. We've seen how far behind Manchester United are. It's laughable, some of the things that have come about Manchester United operationally in the last 12 months. Whether it's like, you know, you see a story that comes out saying, oh, Man United are overhauling the scouting department about a decade too late because too late, they're dealing with Brexit regulations. You know, when they're talking about fans are sitting there at Old Trafford getting dripped on and they go, yeah, we know that the, the roof's leaking. We've got to fix it at the end of the season. End of the season. We've got to fix it at the end of the season. And it was, it was reported the other day that... Um, uh, there was some maybe some interest in buying uh, Inter Milan from um, Sheikh Jassim's camp. And when that when that came out at the time, uh, people went, ah, no, it's not true. But as many people have pointed out, you know, that they will go and get someone else. And um, and if you and if you think that the Glazers, you know, any any essence of the Glazers caring, they don't. And even if and, and look, people will have their. You know, people have their reservations about, you know, uh, state-owned, state-backed ownership or what have you or anything like that. Manchester United, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to be that club. That's fine if you're not pro Qatari. So I don't have an issue with that. But if you're, if you're, if it's a Sir Jim Ratcliffe bid, uh, bid that you're behind, then essentially what it is at the moment, it's pro Glazer because they're being, they're keeping them around. And not only are they keeping them around, I mean, previously there was a mindset of maybe Ineos would buy into Manchester United, but the Glazers would come minority shareholders and they'd be around, but they wouldn't be able to influence things. But not only would they still be around, they'd still be in control. They'd still be in control of the whole thing. Again, I mean, I, sh I shouldn't be shocked. I'm somewhat at a loss for words, but I shouldn't be shocked because uh, an entire farcical process has ended in a completely farcical way. So it's kind of fitting for this whole thing that was a sham in the first place, realistically. And it's a joke, is what it is. It's a complete and total joke. Now, before I get to your super chats, I've just seen that again. This is a developing story, a breaking story. So there is going to be news constantly filtering in on social media. So let me just double check before I get to this as well. Um, uh, ben Jacobs has said that can confirm Sheikh Jassim has withdrawn from the Manchester United process following final and advanced talks. The uh, group offered double the $3.2 billion market valuation of the club and felt the Glazers valuation is outlandish, which it is. It's ridiculous. 
Because from their point of view, and this is why this whole valuation is absolutely bullshit. Because, right, I get it. You know, clubs don't go for value. They always go for a bit more. I don't have a problem with that. But you're looking at buying it. You're buying the club. And then everything else you've got to do after it, wiping the debt, doing the stadium, doing the training ground, investing in the team, investing in the academy, investing in the women's team as well, investing in just the general area that Old Trafford is based around. And and also almost having to over-invest just to try and catch up with what some other people are doing in the Premier League. Look across the city. You know, you think just wiping the debt makes you catch up with Manchester City? Of course it doesn't. You think, you know, just investing in the first team makes you catch up with Manchester City? Of course it doesn't. You know, it's got to be everything. And plus, we're a decade behind. So we're a decade behind. Even if you had, you know, Sheikh Jassin came in with all of the money and the spending power in the world, it would still take years, years to catch up with them anyway. Let alone a group of people that won't do that. And all they care about is taking money out of the club. So the, the valuation, it was totally farcical. And realistically, what they actually meant is when they said six billion pounds, they mean, well, actually, we may, it may be six billion quid to sell you all of it. But we know nobody would spend that unless you're just, you know, stupid, basically. And unless you're stupid, then we'll maybe take that. Otherwise, what we're really looking for, what this really is, is just a bit of a cash grab. We just we just want a bit of money. We'll give a small percentage we might put it, you know, will we put it towards anything massively in particular? we got some interest payments to pay. That's it, you know, for the debt that's there. Remember that debt that's there, they haven't touched. They've just paid interest off it, uh, on it in a couple of times. They've come this close to defaulting on a couple of different occasions. And realistically, the whole situation for why strategic alternatives were explored around, well, beginning this time last year, just a little bit later, is because financially they thought the club's almost in ruin at this point, financially, the cash balance is <laughs> at a low, we're completely in a mess, maybe t it's time to get out now. And then over the course of the last 12 months, they found themselves going, actually, there are some people that are willing just to give us money for no reason. They can have a small percentage of the club. Brilliant. You know? And it's just... It's just ridiculous. It's just, again, a complete and total farce. So, again, that's Ben Jacobs also confirming what everyone else has confirmed. If you are just joining us, by the way, the big developing and breaking news is that Sheikh Jassim, the 92 Foundation, had further talks with the Glazers. They proposed a new bid for close to double the $3.5 billion valuation of the club. It was rejected. And because of that rejection... Sheikh Jassim and the 92 Foundation have told the Glazers they wish to withdraw from the Manchester United takeover race. Um, just a bit more details on this as well. Ben Jacobs is also saying in the last minute or so, those close to the group point out that Sir Jim Ratcliffe was always likely to bid higher due to wanting a smaller stake. As previously reported, it was all, it was always likely the 92 Foundation would pull out before being formally rejected. Uh, Sheikh Jassim's withdrawal happened in the last few days and the group declined to officially comment citing confidentiality restrictions, but have confirmed they have withdrawn. So not only, it's not just reports or anything like that they are now confirming confirm confirming confirming to journalists as well they have withdrawn they are they are out of this race they are done and and to think about the greed involved i mean i still kind of hitting me in waves here think about the greed involved in this double double the valuation double close to six billion quid it's not exactly but it's double what this club is worth on paper, plus pledged investment. Forget pledged investment as well, because they don't care about pledged investment. They don't care about what they've said, oh, we're going to spend this on, you know, the other parts of the club. They are saying to you, we are nearly giving you, well, we're giving you double what this club is worth, and you're still saying no. Instead, you'd rather get significantly less for a smaller chunk so you can stay in charge. We don't want a lot of money. We just want a little bit, and we really want power, because power is better than money to us. You know, we'd rather drive a club into the ground, what we have done for nearly 20 years, as opposed to get paid. I mean, because even the fact of them getting close 6 billion quid, let's make no mistake here. Even the fact of them getting 6 billion quid makes you a bit sick, considering they barely spent any money on buying the club in the first place. It was all leveraged debt that they then put on the club and they had the club pay it off. So it'd be one of the biggest heists in football history to get six billion quid for Manchester United when you basically spent nothing on it in the first place. 
And then they have going, no, we don't want that. We still should have more. We still should have more. And if you even if you even were Ineos, if you even were Sir Jim Ratcliffe, just open Twitter to right now and go, do I want to be involved in this? Do I want to be involved in this? Because there's no win. There is no win for Ineos getting involved at this point. What, they can have a seat at the table, but they don't have final say. They're just giving them money. Just giving them some money for no reason. 25%. Talk Sport are reporting Sir Jim Ratcliffe is believed to be ready to offer to purchase 25% of the Glazers' shares with a view to eventually becoming Manchester United's majority shareholder. But even with that, even with the whole oh, eventually becoming the majority shareholder, when? Is there a timescale on that? Is it, written in, is it written in black and white on paper? Is it an understanding? Because you've proved, it's been proved already. You can't trust these guys. Are you kidding me? You can't trust these people. They said they wanted six billion quid. They got this far away from getting it and they still said no. Do you really want to get into bed with them? Knowing what they, you know, and I mean, again, unless it's written down black and white, by this date, we are going to buy these shares or I've got an option to buy these shares. Do you really want to get involved in that? What is the point? What is the point? Unless you're edging your bets, we, we might be able to work on We might have to work on them in a few years. And also as well, if you can't afford it now, just do a bit of logic involved in this too. Just do a bit, bit of logic. They're saying right now, six billion quid or just under six billion quid, that's not enough. And they're also saying part of the reason why it's not enough too is because we think in two years, three years, Champions League is expanding, Club World Cup's expanding, television rights. By that point, you don't even know if the Premier League is going to be on Sky Sports or TNT or wherever it is. By that point, it might be completely centralised on a streaming service that the Premier League own and they won't be able to charge way much more money for it. So you're saying that in three or four more years' time, you're going to be able to buy out the rest of the Glazer shares for way more money than what was being offered right now. And you're going to get and you're going to find that money where? Because you can't afford it right now. Over time, what we bu we're buying the club in Klarna payments at this point. And you know, and people, it, when you talk about situations like this as well, it makes what's happening on the pitch just feel so minuscule. Doesn't it? So minuscule at this point. And so, you know, I mean, we're talking about the future of the club. We're talking about the future of Manchester United is what we're talking about what, uh, right here. And the future looks bleak, to say the very least. The future looks bleak and the future looks very dark and grey. And um, the question is, you know, what, what happens now? What happens next? Because if Sheikh Jassim's out, there's only one person left in the race. And that one person has been willing to be flexible this whole time. It's been willing to, you know, in the, from, from the very beginning as well, it's been willing to get into bed with the Glazer family and do whatever particularly they wanted. And I would also say, go back to Sir Jim Ratcliffe's first statement. Go back to his press release. I want to put a fan-centric approach. Are you taking the piss? A fan-centric approach to ownership. You own 25% and keep the people that we want out in. That seems very fan-centric. You want to put the Manchester back in Manchester United? Really? Is that, is that what you really want to do? Because that doesn't seem like that's working out very well, does it? And um, throughout all of this, as time went on, and I know people got tired of listening to this takeover stuff again and again and again. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. And I don't blame you. But it doesn't hurt any less. And... You know, it is the hope that kills you. And I know people would say, well, I lost hope a long time ago when it came to all of this. But you really have to take a step back. You have to really take a step back and think, genuinely, what next? What happens now? The stock price will go through the floor, obviously. Um, it's just, it's very, very sad. And again, and I don't... And I don't mean this to come off because I know people will, will will take this as, oh, you're what you're really twerking for, you know, to be state backed or you're really twerking for Middle Eastern oil money. Is that what you're is that what you're is that what it's really come to? And it's not about that. Park where Sheikh Jassim's from to one side. The real reason why this is devastating is because the current ownership structure as it is right now 
is not changing. The current people that have the control over Manchester United are involved in the key decisions. They're not, they're not going anywhere. Things aren't changing. And in fact, they, they got what they believed to be the perfect scenario involved in all of this. They got some money and they kept their power. Nothing's changed for them. And Ineos acquiesced as well. They kept now the minority shareholders happy. They weren't involved in the process. Because you would even look at them too. The minority shareholders of Manchester, you don't have any the best interest of the club. Because the only reason that you threatened litigation against Manchester United was because you weren't involved. Where's our money? Was the response. That was that was the cry. When Ineos wanted to buy 69% from the Glazers, it was, well, oh, no, we're going to tie you up in litigation. Oh, right, because you feel like, you know, this wouldn't be for the best interest of the club, blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> no, no. The real, the, real, the real reason we're upset is because what about our money? What about the minority shareholders' money? And then Sergeant Ratcliffe and Ineos come back and say, well, we'll buy your shares too. Well, fine, no problem. Done. Easy. Okay, brilliant. So nobody's got the best interest at the club at heart. Nobody cares about winning. Nobody cares about competing. You know, that's why I, that's why I, you know, kind of roll my eyes a little bit when people go, but we're Manchester United, not under the Glazers. We're not Manchester United under the Glazers. You look at Sir Alex Ferguson, he had success towards the end of his tenure of them there, but that's a, it was just because Sir Alex Ferguson was there. Sir Alex Ferguson. And this is why when people talk about, you know, Eric Ten Hag and whether or not he's going to get sacked or or whoever, or whether we're going to thrive on the pitch, whether we're going to do well, or, you know, what happens with the players and this, that and the other. This is the point that people keep making over and over and over again. We have had some of the best, Sir Alex, since Sir Alex Ferguson's retired, we've had some of the best managers around. We've had some of the best players around and it's become a graveyard for all of them. Why has it become a graveyard for all of them? Because it's the same thing. No manager, no player can truly succeed with this ownership the way that it is. That's the problem. It cannot succeed with the way that it is. And the reason it's devastating today isn't necessarily because of the Sheikh Jassim withdrawing part. The reason that it's devastating is because the reality is it's not going to change. Nothing's going to change, at least for the foreseeable future. And I know that Surgeon Ratcliffe can say, well, it's a foot in the door. I'm trying. But come on, man. You've got into bed with them. And, you know, if you lay with dogs, you're going to get fleas because you know what's going to happen. And it's just it's it's sad. It's very, very sad. I'll get to your super chats. I did promise to do that ages ago. Um, here we go. Red Baron with the super chat says, I think the Glazers have shot themselves in the foot, to be honest. I don't think they will get another deal like this. They are not good business people, just inheritors of wealth. Well, I can't, I can't. This is the thing too, is are we suggesting that Ineos over, an, are we suggesting Ineos over the space of however long they say they're going to buy out the Glazers? Are they suggesting they're going to pay more than what Sheikh Jassim offered over the last few days. Close to £6 billion. Are we saying that Ineos are going to spend more than that over however many years? Because they've already said they can't afford it right now. So who's to say they can afford it over the next few years? When is that going to happen? Um, Owen says, not me, uh, Jim Ratboy is a snake. Ratcliffe out, Glazers out. Uh, Tina says, uh, this is bad. Is relegation the best um think we can uh, think for at this time. Glazers out. Aminor says, for F's sake, I hate the Glazers so much right now. Uh, Zotang says, um, we need to realise there's nothing wrong with the Glazers asking for six billion. They own the club. They can sell it for what they want. It's Qatar that need to realise United is a one-of-one -one asset and they need to overpay to own a rare asset. But they've already overpaid. I don't... Again, but it's, I understand that if you own something, you can set the valuation at whatever you want. And if you don't pay it, then you're, it's your right to reject it. But at the same time, again, I, my complaint more is the fact that it's got nothing to do with the success of Manchester United. It's got nothing to do with the success of the club. They could give two shits about the club. They could give two shits about the fans or anything like that. And as far as, well, Qatar need to realise they need to overpay. From their point of view, they've offered double and it got rejected. And also, from the, again, it's, it's, like, it's like buying a dilapidated house for double market value and then realising you still need to spend probably a third of its valuation on fixing it up to actually, actually seeing its potential. It's, it's madness. It's madness. It's bad business. You know, it's just oh, ridiculous. 
Andy says, Owen, so Reuters, Bloomberg, Neil Custis and many others are liars. They were saying all along Qatar, but they were never close. What are your thoughts? Well, when those... Um, well, <laughs> this is the thing, yeah, Andy. So when those things came out and... This is what this is a, a thing that I've been saying a lot recently, and I don't know if it's a modern day phenomenon. I don't know, right? I don't know, but there is this weird thing now, where if you give people the news they want to hear, then it's definitely true. If you give people the news they don't want to hear, it's definitely bullshit. And at the time when Neil Custis came out and said, "Oh, the United are going to be owned by Qatar in the middle of October," everyone went, "No, they're not." Like, of course, no, they're not. When Reuters came out and said that stuff way back when about that and everyone else, all of the other journalists at the time, like your Mike Keegan's, like whoever said, that's not what I'm hearing. I haven't heard that, you know, from the people I've spoken to. That's not the case. They got slandered. They got slandered and told, you're a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. It's all, you, you, you know, why would Reuters say that? And then actually, the Reuters people, the, the journalist came out, he was on a for Paddock, it was a great interview, and shout out to those guys. And he said, well, that's kind of my opinion. And you go, well, that's not what you were saying <laughs> at the time. That's what you were saying at the time. And this is a day, this is a moment that's been, that's been coming. And also as well, to all of those stupid in the know accounts, yeah? And I've seen them over, the, over this international break. The money's in escrow, folks. The money's in escrow. They're just waiting. Paperwork has been signed. Paperwork has been signed by the Glazers. Paperwork has been signed by Sheikh Jassim. It's just a case of regulatory approval. Have you seen that one too? Those people that had the Qatar flags, the sand timers, the eyeball emojis. Where are they now? Oh yeah, it was all bollocks. <laughs> it was all rubbish. And it's just like, come on, you know. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, another super chat from Zotang says, uh, the Glazers said since day one, they want six billion. You can't go to Gucci and pay 750 for 750 quid for a shirt that cost one, one K. Well, look, obviously, look, you've got your mind set up that the, the Qataris didn't pay enough. I would argue, considering the actual valuation of the uh, on the market is that it's three point five billion dollars uh, and they've offered clear to uh, close to double that, you know, and bear in mind, too. Yeah, bear in mind, they've had a look at the books. They've had a, they've had their representatives go to. So if you want to use that Gucci analogy, they've gone to the shop. Yeah, they've gone to the shop. They felt the material. They've gone to the the factory and see how much it costs to make the shirt and gone, that shirt doesn't cost that much. That's rubbish. They've looked under the hood of the car. They've seen the financials and all that kind of stuff. And they know realistically how much it's worth too. And they've offered what, what is double that, and they've st and they've still been rejected, and it's still been no. And that was what this because this was a new bid, so that's what the sixth bid in this process, a three round process, and six. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, just to see if there's any more information on this, because again, it's a developing story as well. Um, so TalkSport are also saying here, um, and these are always uh, funny to say uh, after the fact, isn't it? TalkSport say that Joel and Avram Glazer have always been reluctant to enter into a full sale of United, which is easy to say now, but it was not what they were saying previously as well. They were saying um, previously that, uh, well, they'd always sell at the right price. Well, clearly not. Clearly they wouldn't sell at the right price. Um what else are we saying here? Um, it's being reported by, it's from iPaper Sports, says um, Sheikh Jassim's final bid was understood to be around £5.2 billion and had increased since the final bid in April, but that's not really what other people were saying. That's not what um, Fabrizio Romano was saying as well. Mike Keegan says, sources say Sheikh Jassim made an improved offer in the last few days, which they describe as an increase in the hundreds of millions. When that was rejected, he pulled the plug. Um... And I think that's I think that's caught up as well. Um, so look, now it's the case of there's only one there's only one offer seemingly on the table, which is um, 
which is Ineos's, which is uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's, unless, you know, those um, other minority interests, again, like the, the Carlisle's, like the Elliot's, which we never really heard that anything more about as well, um, unless they come back to the table. Because if it, if it is just a case of, you know, the Glazers are really only offering up minority shareholdings, then maybe those those other consortiums or investment banks might get back into it and say, well, if you're accepting this amount from Ineos, maybe we'll look to do something similar for a smaller amount or something like that. But the it looks like the end game to this exploration of strategic alternatives is going to end not with a full sale, not with a uh, full transaction or anything like that. It's going to end with more of the same. A cash injection that may or may not go to what really needs to be uh, addressed at Manchester United. So for all of those people too, that were doing those stupid AI pictures of Old Trafford, I saw those two putting mountains in Manchester. Maybe they can stop doing them now because that's not happening either. Um, and I, I, the, the question is now, what, what's the fan reaction going to be? Of course, throughout this whole protest, uh, pro process, there have been protests, easy for me to say. And one would think that they would now hype up and and continue to really go into go into overdrive what they would look like i don't know of course if we get any more information on that um we'll let you know what it is moving forward i'm sure there are plans certainly um too and um i mean it's a, it's a loss for words realistically uh what else are people saying here um Oh, there was a super chat, but it was deleted so by, by one of the mods, so I didn't see what it said. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm not even going to say click the like button or anything like that. It's not It's not appropriate, certainly, to click the like button. Um, Mike Keegan's just uh, released his article on it as well. Let's go through this. So he has said that Sheikh Jassim has withdrawn his offer for Manchester United in a bombshell move that opens the door for rival Surgeon Ratcliffe. The Qatari has pulled out of the race for the Premier League Giants after becoming increasingly frustrated with the club's owners, the Glazer family. It is thought that Jassim made an increased bid in the last few weeks, but again failed to meet the Glazers' valuation. The offer was thought to be around £5.5 billion, but still short of the £6 billion the Americans are thought to want. Sources have disclosed that Jassim held further and final discussions and negotiations over the last few weeks, but after again having his offer, which was which was for 100% of the club, rejected, he decided to pull the plug on what has been a nine-month saga. The Qatari believed he would have been the dream owner, according to those with knowledge of the situation, and is saddened by how it has all played out. Jassim's move now leaves Ratcliffe in pole position. The British petrochemicals billionaire appears to have made a breakthrough with a bid for a quarter of the club, which does meet the Glazers' valuation. Um, how the development is received by United fans who had demanded a full sale and departure of the Glazers remains to be seen. And, and again, that last bit there, I think, is really, really telling too. Um, because that was my sort of feeling through throughout the whole process was, you know, you can't, dangle that carrot this was this was my thing you can't dangle that carrot for nine months nine months you dangle that carrot to say nah yeah we, to to get some money that isn't gonna really benefit united i mean again maybe it might go to some interest payments on the debt maybe but as far as the stadium as far as anything else I don't know, unless Ineos are going to say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll put some money in for that. We'll, we'll commit to helping you out with that. I mean, go back to, like, you can trace all of this back. Remember when Richard Arnold, this was the summer of last season, before the season had even started, and he was in that pub. And why was he in the pub with those people? Because they'd come to his house. I mean, this is, again, this is where we are. They'd come to his house, and he said, I'll take you for a pint instead. And then it got filmed, and it got leaked out. And he was talking about, I go, I look around Carrington and I, I hear, I see that we spent a billion pounds, but I can't see it anywhere. Basically saying, our training ground shit. He goes, I look around Old Trafford. I don't see the money anywhere. But he's saying the stadium, yeah, I know it's shit. Because we need sponsors. We need investors in that. But with Ineos, there's no guarantee that the money they're buying in with is going to go to anything productive at Manchester United. As far as we know, it might just be to buy out four of the siblings. We know that part of a problem involved in all of this takeover saga is that it's like succession in that some of the Glazer siblings want nothing to do with Manchester United, but Joel and Avram do. 
And there's been stories about possibly them looking into how can we buy out the siblings. So who's to say that that money won't go and actually it's just actually, you know, because we know that Ineos are going to buy some of the Glazer shares as well as some of the minority shares. Who's to say they're not the shares of the siblings that won out? So again, with that money, is that going to go back into United? No, because they'll take that money and run. So we get we end up in a situation where we've got this 25% owner that may or may not do nothing as well. Nothing at all. And, you know, it, like I said, it makes you wonder. And, and maybe and, and look, this is maybe the point that Sheikh Jassim came to for why he's withdrawn. Of maybe him realising, why am I involved in this? Why, why, why am I in this race? Why am I putting these bids in? Because they're not going to be accepted. I mean, there have been these reports for months, haven't there? Absolute months that pff, there's some doubts, actually, that the Glazers even want to sell. And then it keeps coming out. No, no, no. They'd sell for the right price. They really would. But those people involved in it haven't really heard that from all of those people. That no, actually, they probably don't want to sell. And then if you come, if you've come to that conclusion, if you've come to that conclusion, actually, those people that are that own the thing I'm looking to buy, they don't want to sell. Then why are you wasting your time? That's what they'll probably think about it. You know, why should I bother? Why bother wasting my time on this whole situation? And uh, it's just, again, it's a, it's a very dark day. And again, that's not because, oh, you, you're such, I can't believe you're sitting here and you're twerking for state ownership. It's a dark day because the, the conclusion of it's there to be seen. Even if it, if it wasn't some, if it was just a, a, an unbelievable, because even look, even with Ineos and Sir Jim Ratcliffe, yeah, if they had purchased that 69% of United that they were looking for, if they were looking, if they said, we just want to get rid of the Glazers, even if he wasn't your preferred option, I think we could all get behind that. I, I, I think I think we could all get behind, you know, if it was Sir Jim Ratcliffe or it was Ineos and they said, look, we've got rid of the Glazers. Yeah, we know we don't have the actual, the wealth that Sheikh Jassim has or what have you. Everyone could have got behind that, you know, because they wouldn't be here anymore. And at least it would have been somewhat of a fresh start. Maybe not the complete total fresh start that the Qataris would have offered, but it would have been something. But again, we've come to the end of this process and actually, in reality, nothing's changed that much. N nothing's changed. Now, Imran says, um, we know nothing about Sir Jim's plan to invest into the club. The problem is, Imran, you know, that, that he could be wanting to put his, his some money into the club, but he doesn't have total say about how it's actually, um, how it's spent. They don't have, they don't have control. They don't have control on the key elements, the key decisions of the club as well. They, they, they don't have those, they don't have that authority with the percentage that they have. They don't. You know, whether they want to bring in, I remember those stories, oh, he want, wants to bring in Paul Mitchell. That's not even his call with 25%. He can re recommend it to the Glazers. Hey, I don't think you should have John Murto or Richard Arnold. Joel Glazer, no, nah, it's still my call. So I'll say no to that one. You know, like he said no to, like they said no to buying Harry Kane in the summer. Remember that as well? Still said no, no, because because it's their call. They're still in charge of it all. So Ineos can put money into the club. They can say, we'll, we'll put some money towards the stadium. But ultimately, it's the Glazers. The Glazers are still in charge of that cash. They're still in charge of how they can uh, spend that money uh, or whether or not they want to keep it, whether they want to take it out of the club. They can do that all. You know, they can choose all that kind of stuff. They're still in control. And that's part of the problem. Uh, let's have a look, see if any more updates. Then I'll get some of your super chats as well. Um, uh, ben Jacobs has said a bit more info on Sheikh Jassim's withdrawal from the Manchester United process. Understand this has been coming for some time, but it follows additional and advanced new negotiations. Jassim bid almost $6.5 billion for the club, plus pledged investment, which increased from $1 billion to over $1.7 billion, which I don't understand that last part of it either. You know, he increased his pledged investment from $1 billion to $1.7 billion. That's, that is completely redundant because... The Glazers never have cared about that part of it. They don't, when they're looking at the numbers or when the offer comes in and they see pledged investment, they might as well draw a massive cross through that and say, because that's not the money that they're getting. So they've never cared about that at all. And um, 
again, it's very sad how this process is playing out. Because realistically, as I mentioned, it's the hope that kills you. You get a little bit of little bit of hope, and now it uh, it descends into this, which is uh, you know nonsense. Um, where am I at with the super chats as well? Uh, uh, James says. Um, haven't seen you this deflated in a long time. Stay strong and go to our room. Much love, my dear friend. The pain continues on and on and on. Big up to James. Uh, Andy says, um, uh, Oh, in Devil's Advocate, I thought Middle East sh uh, shakes do not lose when they're interested. I wouldn't pay a penny to the Glazers, but couldn't they just pay six billion? Well, it was kind of pointed out, I think, by Ben Jacobs there as well. Um, and I think some others suggesting that you know, because again, it is sometimes about perception too. They don't want to have the perception that, because there's lots of conflicting information here. You get some people saying they've been rejected and then you get other people saying, no, they walked away before they were getting rejected. So now it's a game of saving face really, isn't it? It's a game of, no, we didn't get rejected. We walked away because they, we realized they weren't going to play ball. Or no, actually, you know, they, 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 we were still at the right price. We were going to sell. We rejected them. We were still willing to do business. So you're getting kind of two conflicting messages here. But the reality is that Sheikh Jassim is no longer in the race. It's done. And effectively, I mean, not officially, but effectively, one would think that that means this whole takeover process is near enough done because there's one person left, one the last person standing. And reports of just a few days ago, they were going to talk about his bid at uh, the next boardroom meeting. When that is, I don't know, but it seems pretty soon. Um, Red Baron says Qatar was the last hope for keeping us fans sane. Um, Jan says time to call Sully and Duchesne on the Glazers. Uh, uh, Andy says Owen, this is big news. Please call Fleck or KG now. I don't know whether well Fleck's not in the country, so I don't I don't actually know what his uh, what his uh, situation is. Um, KG KG probably doesn't know. <laughs> Which is, which is typical KG. KG will find out in about four hours or something like that. That 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 is Kevin Gary. That's what will happen with him. I'll try. Uh, Red Baron says um, maybe with that hope broken, us fans will start to mobilise something completely different. Um, and Simran says this will get nasty. Well, it's going to be really interesting to see what the reaction is going to be because it's not going to be good, like at all. It's not going to be good. Um, I mean, I can try, I can try uh, with with Fleck, but I'm not sure how this will go. Because again, he's, li he's literally not in the country and he's in a different time zone. But we'll see. Let's have a look. You never know. Didn't think so. Yeah, told you, told you. That's why. That's why you're dealing with me, folks. Should we try KG? KG, KG. I'm. I'm near enough certain KG will not pick up the phone, but I can try. I can try. I mean, because this will literally be. This will be breaking the news to him. This will be breaking the news to him. Let's have a look. Afternoon is also it's Saturday afternoon evening. Owen. KG. Owen. You're live. You're live on United View. Oh man, I'm about to go into a show, but I just saw the. I just saw some devastating news, bro. Yeah, that's why I was ringing you. Oh my goodness, I just went on Twitter just now. I can't believe it. Like, but then, you know, because you got to tell jokes, I can't even get into that mindset. Yo, yeah, <laughs> you can stand up. I'm, I can't believe, but I, yeah, I can't even get there mentally. Yeah, yeah you I can't prepare. even take my head there, but this is, you've got an, you've got an this is mental. Yeah. This is mental, though. Is this real? Is it they're going to withdraw? Or no, they, they have withdrawn? They've, withdrawn. they've withdrawn. Everyone's confirmed it. Fuck me. We're yeah. finished. Yeah. The Glazers, they, I can't believe this. And there's no way you can bring them back to the table. They've just gone. Well, they've they put they put an improved bid in. It was turned down. They said, "F this, then we're off." They've walked away. 
They're finished. Yeah. We're done. We're absolutely done. Yeah. This is, I can't believe it. Any, uh, it must be mad online. Oh my goodness. I yeah, think, anyway, let me, yeah, I've got to yeah, go. I gotta get you, in the zone. Go. I can't even bring this energy into yeah, you it. Look after yourself, speak yeah. to you tomorrow. Yeah, speak to you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So that's Ruin KG set. So if you are actually, some of you might be in the audience. You never know. Some of you might be in the audience, and uh, <laughs> you've got to deal with Kevin Gary trying to tell jokes like that. Oh my god! And the thing is, as well, you know, you know it's uh, serious because uh, you know it's serious because uh, me and KG have been taking shots. Well, I've been taking shots at KG <laughs> in the last twenty four hours. Uh, but yeah, if you are just joining us again, just to recap and you've just sort of seen the thumbnail and gone, what? What's going on there? So the breaking news was about 45 minutes ago um, from Fabrizio Romano. He broke the story. It was an exclusive from him um, saying that Sheikh Jassim had held further discussions with the Glazer family to buy 100% of Manchester United. Uh, Sheikh Jassim's bid uh, proposition had been rejected again by the Glazer family. As a result, Sheikh Jassim has informed the Glazers he's ready to withdraw from the process, which left a bit of ambiguity about ready to withdraw. But since then, several journalists, Mike Keegan, Ben Jacobs, Sky Sports News, Rob Dawson, they've all come out and said... Um, he has withdrawn from the process. He he is he is out basically. He is uh, he is withdrawn from this whole process, which only leaves Ineos and uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe on the table. The latest with their offer was the same as it was a couple of uh, days ago from Bloomberg, which said that um, they were going to purchase twenty five percent of Manchester United for I think it was something like one one point five billion pounds, something like that. I think maybe. Um, but yes, that that is the latest news. Uh, let me check these super chats here as well. Um, see if I'm caught up to. Um, James says, just watch uh, Jasson by Liverpool or something now. Well, this is going to be the interesting thing because, you know, I think people had pointed out that, you know, there was uh, rumours about Spurs wasn't there. Of course, their majority owners going through a lot, quite a few uh, legal issues at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting a call from Fleck. Flex your live on your own channel. Has he put me on? Has he called me and put me on hold? Or he's reconnecting? I knew this connection was going to be tough. I knew this was going to be difficult. But Flex. You're Hello. back. You're back. Flex your live on your own channel. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it, oh, so the reception's just terrible. I just, um, do you know what? I just, you just, uh, done a bit, I just done a recording just to like have my views and have my thoughts actually put it out. Yeah. Cause I'm pissed off, man. Obviously I'm not in the country at the minute. Yeah. Um, and it's just put a real dampener on just how I'm feeling, how we're feeling. Obviously blessed in life to be, you know what I mean? Underneath the sunshine and blue sky. So there's things bigger than football, but United fan today, I think it's, uh, it's not good news for United fans across the world right now. Is it really? No. Um, it's disgusting. Um, where do I start? I mean, you know, when you see the reports, which we kind of knew, but you see the official, um, Uh, this is. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like um, it's like a heartbeat as well. Just hello, you're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, it might do this a bit. Um, I'll be brief. I'll be brief. When you see the clarification and confirmation of Sheikh Jassim bidding twice the valuation, and they still said no, and I said it to KG when we was away. I said the Glazers don't give a shit. We all know they don't give a shit about us. They're not going to be forced into selling. They want more and more and more. And if they don't get it, they'll just say no. Mm. Yeah, so, and that's exactly what's happened. Yep, yeah, exactly. They and, it, you know? and now it's coming out. Actually, they never really were interested in a full sale anyway. You know what I mean? It was just a cash there grab. There you go. Just a cash, and that's what we've said. There you go. Just a cash grab. Oh, is that what's coming out now? Is it? Yeah. So, can we get the beeps? There we do. <laughs> oh. Just like this club, this calls on life support. You know. It is. Will he come back? That's the question. Probably not. I'll stick with it, though. I mean, yeah. Didn't really, 
But he got a bit of a preview of what Flex thinks there. There will be a Flex's view coming, as he mentions. There will be a Flex's view coming out very shortly. So you can get Flex's, uh, um, Flex's thought on it as well. But as I mentioned, Flex, Flex has a, an incredible timing with this. Because I believe Flex wasn't in the country when this was announced in the first place. <laughs> so it's kind, of, it's kind of fitting, realistically, that um, Flex... I think Flex was in Qatar. Was he in Qatar when this... I think, I think so. And then uh, now he's out the country again, and now it's, you know, come back in too. It's uh, crazy. Um, where am I with the Super Chats as well? Uh, am I caught up? Aminor says, oh, and please call DJ or Mina for their reaction. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are at the moment. And I need to know if, if, if uh, Flex would... Uh, would call back as well, um, but as I mentioned, there will be a flexible. You've got a, you've got a, um, a, a, a brief, a brief thing, uh, a brief flexes view uh, from him as well. I think, like I said, he'll probably go back. Um, all right, Andy, look, okay, DJ's calling me now. Jesus, DJ, DJ, you live. Andy's shouting at me. Look at, look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at this. Look at this. DJ's in the chat. For fuck's sake, call him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Owen, where do I start, man? Just we, these tyrant of owners, man. Just scumbaggery. They don't care about us. They don't give a damn about the fan base. They don't give a damn about our feelings. They don't give a damn about football. It's just all for the money. It's all for the show. They've literally taken Sheikh Jassim Al-Tani, al -Tans. They've taken him for a complete ride. They came in, the, the Qataris came in professional. The bid was was perfect in a sense of 100% of the club. And as fans, they promised all of the stuff that we've been wanting for 15 years plus. And to hear them just, hear the Glazers just piss it away. And potentially they're going to go with Sir Jim. Potentially, that's what it's kind of looking like. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm 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 honestly gutted. Like I'm gutted, man. And and I feel I feel for the for the fans that you know saw Manchester United in the glory days. And the reality is this: if Qatar did event, if if Qatar did come in, we would be a superpower again, and and they could you know of really you know fix some of the stuff that had gone on you know previously. It's just it's just mind boggling how we we it looks like for the next. 20 years now we, we might be fucked legit we might be fucked so it's just really disheartening um twitter's going crazy social media's going mad um and just thanks to you for covering this because it is it's a big thing man yeah well i think also as well um and, and this is where i think people get kind of mistaken because like you know the, the opposition fans or the rival fans will say ah oh, look at this all of these united fans crying because they're not getting state ownership or they're not getting you know, oil money or Middle East and this or whatever. It's not even about that. The reason, as you mentioned, of being so disappointed and sad is that, you know, that they're, they're sticking around. Nothing's changing. You know, the Glazers yeah. glaze are still in majority control. As I mentioned earlier, if it was a situation like it was before, where Ineos won, but they got the Glazers shares and they were out, people would be like, well, it wasn't my preferred one, but you can get behind it. You could have got yeah. behind, you could have got behind it, couldn't you? But... You can't yeah. get behind them sticking around, getting some money, and nothing changing. Like, what purpose yeah. does that serve? Yeah, it, it, to be honest, I, I honestly feel, and I said this a while ago, I, I think in many years to come, eventually when they do go, because I think they will go at some point, but eventually when they do go, I, I believe there'll be a sort of a, a documentary into this. Honestly, oh, yeah. I will, because I've honestly felt that they've just run this club into the ground. Oh, wait, wait, two seconds, sort of like DJ. Flex is now calling yeah. me again. Oh, Flex is calling me again. No, 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 no. Two seconds, two seconds. Flex, you're live again on your own channel. This is a disgrace. <laughs> this is why, this is why, this is why. I can see people in the chat. Why was it DJ calling goes? Because I knew Flex was going to call me back. And now he's hung up again. Oh, God. Now he's trying again. Flex is, having, Flex is having a stinker. He really is. Wait a minute, let me try again. Flex, you're back live on your own channel. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Yes, uh, I actually just got a call, phone call from uh, Bloomberg, actually, on the other line. Oh, really? Um, 
And uh, yeah, they just obviously they confirmed to me what we all have been seeing. Um, someone at Boomhug did just say to me, that was say that they, you know, they, they they never know. They 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 do feel like maybe you know with, with the sale process, Sheikh Jassim could come back. Mm. He, at this at this stage, it is that it definitely is that, and and apparently. His dad, Sheikh Jassim's father, is the one actually leading this. He's quite conservative, doesn't really like football. And they feel like they're being ripped off. So, yeah. like, we've always known about the Qataris. They, if they feel like they're being made to pay way more than something is, just because they have the money, they were never going to just surrender to it, um, which is what's happened. But Bloomberg just said to me that, yeah, they feel um, that is that is the case right now. I'm definitely not spreading fake news and saying, no, no, he hasn't pulled out. That is the news. The news is the news. But they do feel as if um, uh, a sort of "you never know" line was was said to me. But if I'm honest, I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't think so. I think yeah. it's over. Yeah, I mean, um, I suppose it's the so, case of yeah. like you, they they said, "Well, never say never," because he they could like categorically you can't say yeah, that it they would could never just happen. Just get angry and say, "Oh, do you know what? Yeah, exactly. Um, we'll just we'll just we'll we'll come back and just and just buy the lot. What do you want? We'll just pay it out of anger, not anger, but you know, you never know. But that is. That is slim pickings, I think. To go through five rounds of bids, be left, uh, you know, in the lurch for so long, being told no and no, and like for Bitso said in his video, it's quite simple. The Glazers were told no. <laughs> I yeah. mean, sorry, they, they, the Sheikh Justin was told no. They said no and no again. It's not the valuation they want. And they want the guy's going to give them a minority investment and put, put his money into his pocket where they don't have to. Yeah. But our biggest fear, confirmed. Yeah. Exactly. You know, this is actually worse. This is, this is worse. Yeah. This is worse than the situation from before. Yeah, exactly. Cause I was just—I was just talking really to, uh, to just talking to DJ on the phone, saying that, um, you know, I, if it was when, before when it was Sir Jim Ratcliffe going for six, the, the the Glazers share rather, you could have a situation where you could say, well, actually, you know, as long as the Glazers are out, you can get behind any bid, but that's not mm. the case because you know they're still here and they've just been paid for it. <laughs> they've just been paid for doing this exactly. process. Exactly. You know? It's disgusting, and there will be some quite strong quotes from myself as well, because Bloomberg wanted um, some quotes from me for a piece that was running on it, obviously. Um, and I just told them straight. I, well, there were some bits I said, don't put that in there, because obviously I don't think you can print swearing in your articles. Yes. But um, I said, um, yeah, we just we just feel like we're just staring down the barrel of a dark hole, you know, um, and you know, expecting more of the same from the Glazers who have and have had no intention of ever selling Man United and now just want to continue to use it how they've always had and that's as a cash cow. Mm -hmm. um, and there's now massive reservations over the future of the club and where we're, where we're going to go, yeah. you know. Um, I'm assuming, uh, you can't speak for everyone, even in the piece that I've done that I'll upload after Owen's finished so you guys can hear my full views. Um, you know, there are minorities of, of fans, you know, that say, I didn't want Qatar anyway, you know, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, let's see what he's got to, to do or what he's got to say. That's not my reflection. I know that's not what you agree with, Owen, and a lot of you watching United View, but, but I know there are a few people who think like that. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming most people there in the comments, is, is everyone pretty, you know, down and obviously yeah, wanting Qatar? I, yeah, I, right yeah, yeah I, think, I think so. And, and again, for, for me, as I've said before, it's not, it's not even about, you know, uh, oh, twerking for um, state-backed money or Middle Eastern oil money, right. whatever you want to call it. For me, it's the fact of actually... You can't. You, again, they're still here. So how can you get behind? Yeah. How can you get behind that? As I said, e exactly. even if even if it was um, Ineos won the race, but the Glazers are gone, I would go. You know what? Not my preferred uh, yeah, choice. And it was 100 percent yeah, Ineos. Yeah, but you, go, you go. Not my. Pref or even if it was 69 percent Ineos, but it was the Glazers shares, which we know couldn't happen. Yeah. But even if they went, well, we got rid yeah. of them and a little bit of the minority shareholders. You go. You know what? Wasn't my yeah. preferred choice, but guess what? It's a start. Yeah. It's somewhat of a clean slate. It's not yeah. a total clean slate with debt and all that, but still, I can get behind that. I can't get behind them sticking worse. around. Yeah. You know, that's that's what you can't yeah. get behind. That's it. It's um I mean look, let's let's hope we look back on this day and something happens remarkable where we go, Wow, didn't see Sir Jim Ratcliffe doing all these things, which isn't gonna happen by the way. But that's all we've got now. That is all we've got, which ain't gonna happen. We're kidding ourselves. Let's face it. Mm. The Glazers have got what they wanted, which is minority investment, someone else to put their money in their pocket. And I'm just I'm just fucking pissed off. Yeah. Excuse me, I don't even know what time it is at home, but no. I am. I, I'm like, it's, it's, it's the leeches of one again. They, they've offered double. They fucking offered double for this club, and they still said no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just disgusting. Over... And I, and you know what? Part of me, I'm, I'm upset because I don't even know why I'm getting upset because it's like, why are we surprised? Yeah, exactly. Why are we surprised? They, I've said this. These guys have showed their fucking hands so many times. 
they've showed exactly who they are and what they're about and what their intentions are or lack of intentions are for this football club. And they've shown, sorry, the plane going over. Um, they, they've shown a million times that, you know, they're not interested in the development and the betterment of Manchester United. They're not, and they never have been, and they never fucking will be. No. And now we're stuck with it. We're stuck with them. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, and also, you know, and I'm sorry on a on a on a Saturday evening to be shouting and swearing, but no, it's, it's just pissed me no, off, it's, man. It's, and also as well, it's the case of this mindset of uh, well, Sir Jim Ratcliffe said he might you know, try and buy the Glazers out over time. Is that confirmed? Oh, bollocks. Is that over? And exactly. also as well, if you've just seen them turn down nearly six billion quid for United, what you think you're exactly. going to be able to do that in two or three years? Is that exactly? Is, is, is that is that exactly. what, is what you think you're going to be able to do? Is he going to come with more than that within three years to get him out? Of course he fucking yeah, exactly. He's can't... just he's just happy to get into bed with him because he can. He just wanted to do anything to win, mm. just to get in. He wants to be. He, he probably would stay a minority shareholder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's it's just the worst thing that could have happened after coming up to a year as well. Just as we come up to the anniversary of this shit show, mm. you know. Um, you, this and I'm just I'm just so fucked off. Right, I get it. It's, it's uh, the entire thing. Is like I said, it's a farcical process. So I guess it has a farcical. You know, ending, listen. You know, yeah. Ex- serious things going on in the world right now. You know, where our hearts are with you know people across the world who are really going through real life stuff. So I'm not. I am putting that into perspective. Mm. But obviously, we're a Manchester United channel. We're discussing Manchester United business at this point. And as a football club, as an institution, it's fucking disgusting. How oh, yeah, it's, a dark, it's a dark run day. It's and how it's going day. to continue. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And. Oh, I tell you what, it was good for a second, though, wasn't it? Are you back? Yeah. Are you back? Uh, an ounce of positivity in this. I get it. People, some people are glass half full and, and are thinking, well, at least something's happening. Not me. I can't see one bit of positive news that's come out of today. The, at all. the only thing you can cling on to is a bit like the Super League stuff all over again, where that was that just collapses. where everyone was everyone was saying you know all the clubs came out and everyone did the yeah. statements and that kind of stuff and look yeah. we, we didn't and get it, it, it like it was done. but yeah. there's an and, argument and to be made just comes from nowhere but there's an argument to be says, made that yeah. we still definitely we still kind of have got the Super League because all this other stuff's happening now so if there's a will exactly. there's a way with we, with people with this kind of stuff so exactly I don't know like you said yeah. like oh well, like Bloomberg have said to you well never say never you know they could come back to the table but yeah they already think they were ridiculously overpaying anyway so why suddenly would they go we'll give you more exactly exactly and that was unanimously across the board mike keegan bain jacobs rob dawson even came to the forefront for it so breaking news bloomberg ringing me Mm. to say more like come on like it's over yeah it's fucking over and again unless Um, unless literally you know, because because obviously there's going to be a huge fan reaction from a protest point of view to this. Yeah, there has yeah, to yeah, be, of course. unless they make yeah. that position completely untenable, where it's like, look, no, there's only one offer you can accept. You know, but again, I don't know oh, how I that works. I don't think so. They've I don't never know cared. How that they works. sit, they exactly. sit in their mansions in America. They don't give a shit. We've been protesting for ages. I know that sounds so defeatist. People saying get games called off and do this and do that. The Glazers won't sell the club. Doesn't matter what we do. Some one person did say to me the other day, just. Actually, I'm not going to say what they said. It's inappropriate given what's going on in the world. That's, there's bigger things in football. I won't say that. But, um, yeah, I did, you know, they, they ain't going to sell. Yeah. Protests will not make them sell. That sounds so defeatist. And I will back any protest. I will be there. But I'm telling you now, you know, we got a game cancelled before. <laughs> they just reschedule it, mate. Like, it's not, they're not going to sell. That sounds so bad. It sounds so defeatist. And we are stronger together. We are stronger as a United you know, fan base, which we're all united in getting these leeches out of the football club. But I'm telling you now, we can protest every single game. We could boycott the stadium and not go to games. They'll just sell the TV rights. The Man United will still be a big powerhouse and there'll be fans from other places in the world who would just take the fans of the places who didn't want to go to the games. And on top of that, we love our team. We love our football club. And this is what, why these owners get away with it because they have fans by the heart. You know, mm. they have them by the heart. No yeah. one's really going to turn their back on their football team. Yeah. I know people want to, and I know people want to just boycott it and, you know, but you'll buy a TV subscription instead or you'll buy internet to, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but they, they ain't going to sell. You but, can, I'm, I'm really frustrated right now. But, but yeah. you could say, you know, even though it's, it's unlikely to change their minds, you've got to try. You know, Absolutely. You, you've got to try. Absolutely. You, know, cause you never Absolutely. know. Because like I said, with the Super League thing, when people were coming out and saying, you know, 
Well, all the clubs did the statements. It was happening, you know. Yeah, and, and then, but the, the, and the then only thing with that is, is that that was across many fan bases. Ah, yes, like, that's true. A, that's do you true. know what I mean? So but, that was like loads of you know uproar and riots when every single club, pretty much, especially in the big six, came and made a stance. Well, that's but then, then but that's why just, that's why know, then you know it has to be more than getting the mega do- mega store shut down for a day. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it has to be. And but also, I just don't know. You know, that was messing with UEFA's money. That was messing with the FA's money. That was messing with so much more things. This ain't going to mess with the Glazers' money. I just mm-hmm. don't see how. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, the Premier League ain't going to care. UEFA ain't going to care. You know what I mean? Mm. FIFA aren't going to care. All the big governing bodies aren't going to care. I don't know. I'm sound really defeated. And when I calm down, you know, I might have a different view. But right now, I'm just so and dejected. It's like, what's the point? What's the point? Look at look at our club. Just look at it. And you look at people like Newcastle on the way up, doing amazing things. And like I said the other week, I said I'd just sit there, jealous. People can say about Saudi and, you know, things, you know, state-owned. And I know there's different things to talk about for a different day. But from the footballing perspective, they've got everything they need now to go forward and look at us. And, and you know what, Owen? I'll even go one further. Even if it wasn't going to be Sheikh Jassim, right? And it wasn't going to be that type of ownership. It just needs someone who fucking cares. Well, that's what I said, but that's, you know, what, that's what I mean. You know what that's I mean? What I mean. It we don't even I need... I don't care, I don't care about yeah. you know, who it necessarily United, is. Yeah, it, doesn't need, it didn't need to be Qatar. It needed to be... Like you said, so Jim could have been that person if it wasn't how he structured his bid and what we know he's about. But it could have been, you know, a bloody... You know, another American businessman or bloody, you know, Middle Eastern person or a, a British man or woman or consortium or whatever. As long as they have the right intentions. That's all we want. Man United doesn't even need the level of backing that all these clubs need because Man United is massive. You know, look how much money we've spent with the Glazers being shit. That's mm. our own money. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if we just had someone who just fine-tuned those things, focused on uh, the, the the infrastructure of the club and how it's run and actually just fucking cared, that would be enough and we couldn't even get that. Mm. We had one of the richest people ever who actually cared about the club and a supporter of the club who put it all on the table, pledged $1.4 billion extra not that the Glazers cared, extra, just into Man United. That's just for the club. Just for the club. We had it there on the table. Plus double the valuation it's even fucking worth. Couldn't even do that. But I would say, you know? but I would say with the game, going back to the protest thing though, I would say that even if, even if you know that it's not going to work, even if you know they don't care, even if it hasn't been effective before, you've still not got to give up until, I mean, until it's literally, you know, it's done. Yeah, and, and to make Sir Jim in. know as well. You've he got, needs you've to got to try. If you've he got to try. Even, yeah, even if you could, yeah. even if you scare Sir Jim Ratcliffe off, and it's like of him yeah, going, yeah, from yeah. Ineos's point of view, because they're look, they're a big company. They say actually, fuck this. I don't get involved in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get involved. Maybe. In, I don't get involved in that. Yeah. You got you got to find a way because I think if you if you have that mindset of you know they don't care anyway and they won't they won't have any you know they won't they don't they don't care if we protest or what then they've already won you know. Yeah, see, I, I, t- I take that back. I am, I am just so angry right now. I'm pissed off. I'm just like they're never going to sell. But you're right, you're right, you're right. And uh, like I said, when I calm down and get back, and you know, I'm a million miles away, just looking at the sea. I just, honestly, I'm, I'm just looking at the sea, looking at the blue skies, looking at the water here at home in Jamaica, and I'm just like, just fuck them. Like I'm just so pissed off, mm. just looking far into the horizon, thinking. I'm almost looking for Man United in it. It's really surreal. I'm just looking, 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 looking. I can't see anything. It just goes on and on and on. It feels like, you know, what we're looking into. It's just yeah. what's on the other side of that horizon. I don't know. Just it just goes on and on and on. It's see. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel. So you're right. I don't mean to sound defeatist. I don't mean to sound defeatist. So people in the comments, if, uh, if they're saying that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably back in the room. Well, now, uh, I suppose, uh, there's, the also, there's also but, just a, um, a bit of break, more breaking news coming from Mike Keegan now. Go on. He's just said, breaking, Sir Jim Ratcliffe deal for 25% of Manchester United viewed as the first step in a gradual takeover set to be ratified at board meeting in the coming week. So they're saying that this bid and this 25% yeah. could be done in the next week or it's going to be ratified at the board 25, meeting. 25, 20. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Look, we're getting order. It's, it's happening. And so realistically, they have secured realistically, minority investment. This That's is why, done. this is also why that Sheikh Jassin's been re- reje- rejected because this uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe deal is basically done. That's why. Yeah. Because They've pushed ahead with it. It's done. It's over. It's, it's done. over, bro. So even it's that Bloomberg over. thing of, you know, it could come back. Basically, I think what yeah. Bloomberg are basically saying there, look, 
He could come back in like maybe a day or two. In a day or two, but that's it. Because this is this is it now. And again, this is set to be this is set to be ratified in the next in the next seven days. Twenty five percent. It's going to be the first step of the gradual takeover. I'd love to know what he's got written down to say that that is going to be a first step. Because if that's just his hope that it's a first step in a gradual takeover, look who you're getting into bed with in the first place. Look who you're getting into business with. Because if you trust them, that, oh yeah, we're going to work on it over time. Is that really going to happen? I don't think so. You know? So... Yeah. <sighs> it's a sad day for Man United, mate. Mm-hmm. Remember this day. What's the date today? Uh, well, it's one day after Friday the 13th. So it's the, the, it's right. the, it's well, the uh, Saturday the 14th. Yeah, remember that day, mate. Saturday the 14th, mate. It's going to be a big day in Man United's history yeah. for the wrong reasons. I really do feel that. I really do feel that. Listen, I've got to shoot. Um, as you guys have heard from this, my internet's not great, so I'm going to try to upload this video as soon as I can. Um, and yeah. Yes. Shit day, guys. Yes. Shit day, guys. Shit day. Shit day. But yes, you'll hear from Flex yeah. shortly. Yeah, take care, guys. Yeah. Peace, peace. So that was Flex's view. As I mentioned, um, he will um, he his uh, thoughts on it will be coming very shortly. I, I'm assuming it'll probably be uploaded now. Again, as I was on the phone to Flex, the the breaking news there. Not only after all of this uh, Sheikh Jassim stuff, and also this goes back to saving face, like we were talking about before, wanting to save face on the situation because obviously they wanted to have the uh, the perception that they pulled out of this. But actually, what it really looks like right now is that actually the Glazers rejected that bid because also they've basically already accepted the bid from Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Once again, that breaking news coming from Mike Keegan uh, just a couple of minutes or so ago um, was that um, it was a breaking news that Sir Jim Ratcliffe deal for 25% of Manchester United is viewed uh, viewed as the first step in a gradual takeover is set to be ratified at a board meeting in the coming week. We already knew that a bid from Ineos was going to be discussed at a board meeting in the coming days. It now looks like this is going to be completed in the coming days. So it's not even just a discussion. This is set to be done. So Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos will own 25% of Manchester United. For how much? I think that's somewhat still in dispute. Ben Jacobs did say 15 minutes or so ago, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's valuation of Manchester United is just over $1 billion more than Sheikh Jassim, but of course he's having, um, he's taking a smaller amount. This is expected to be, uh, this is expected with Ratcliffe looking for a smaller stake. To begin with, Jassim valued the club at almost $6.5 billion. Ratcliffe's club valuation is $7.5 billion. So, If someone wants to work out 25% of $7.5 billion, uh, we'll work out how much he's paying for that 25% if uh, if someone can let me know that in the chat. Uh, But again, uh, not only Mike Keegan going with that now, uh, the Times are just reporting in the last minute that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is set to complete a deal for 25% stake in Manchester United. Again, piggybacking on what Mike Keegan is just saying there, this is to be ratified at a board meeting within the next seven days. So arguably, um, when we... Uh, by the time we play Sheffield United next weekend, uh, that deal could be in place. Now, I don't know, again, the complexities, I don't know the paperwork and how long that, you know, that, that will take to do. Obviously, it would be much quicker to do than a 100% transaction of the club. But um, that is also the, the breaking news. So after the news that Sheikh Jassim is out, it looks like Sir Jim Ratcliffe is in and he's in for 25% of United as well. Um, people are saying in the chat that's about $1.875 billion dollars. Someone can someone convert that to pounds, <laughs> pounds for me as well at the same time. But essentially, they've purchased twenty five percent for about one point eight, one point nine billion dollars as well. So that's that's well, that's close to like one point five billion quid, give or take, right? A, a, a little bit. Um, that's that's the amount there. Uh, let me check with the super chats as well. And also, by the way, people that are getting angry at me on the phone, they were saying, why did you hang up on DJ? Because Flex was calling. Because I knew Flex was going to call me back and I knew that he was talking to people on the phone. And I wanted to bring you those quotes. Never doubt. Never doubt. There's always a method to the madness. Um, where am I at as well? Uh, it's just Danny says, more uncertainty for years to come. Um, we wanted rid of Glazers, not plus one. Uh, and again, what we don't know also, we don't know the the structure. Um, we don't know the structure of which Glazers are going to be involved either as well. We, we, we don't know if it's still going to be the six siblings. We don't know. Because remember, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is buying some of the Glazers' shares and also the minority shareholder shares as well. So we don't know whom or which shares he's getting specifically uh, as well. Um, 
Lil Yo Yo uh, says the rat is paying 1.55 billion pounds. So it looks like um, um, it looks like that's going to be the case. Sefi Jokes, you told him to hold, uh, didn't you? And then LOL. Did I say? Did I say hold? I said Flex was calling me. Hey, eh? let's let's don't try it. Don't try it. Yeah, this has been a very chaotic stream <laughs> with what's going on at the moment. Yeah. Um, because we're still now, this is a second wave of information that's coming in at the moment too. Um, once again, so what's quite interesting actually is, so Mike Keegan had said the part about Sir Jim Ratcliffe's uh, bid being ratified in the next seven days. We said that the Times um, had also reported a similar thing as well. Um, it's been reported by Matt Lawton and also Matt Dickinson from The Times saying that Jim Ratcliffe's overall valuation, which is higher than Qatar's offer for 100% of the club, has convinced the Glazers to sell the, Brit to the British billionaire in what's expected and what will be the first step in a full takeover. The agreement is expected to be ratified this week. But still, those... Um, those details on this full takeover appear to be very, very murky right now. They're not suggesting what that is. Um, if we get the full article up as well, um, we can we can read that as we go um, as we go through too. Um, but that again is the breaking news right now. Is um, Surgeon Ratcliffe that deal is set to be ratified in the next seven days? I'm just waiting to see if this article does indeed come up too. Um, uh, from uh, here we go. So, Mike Keegan has written the following, uh, saying, uh, "Sir Jim Ratcliffe is to complete a deal for 25% of Manchester United, which will see the Glazer family remain at the club within days following the withdrawal of Qatari Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani from the takeover battle." The petrochemicals billionaire, a boyhood United fan, has seen off his main rival and uh, his offer. Let me open up this window a little bit more. His offer, which is viewed as the first step of a gradual takeover, is expected to be ratified at a board meeting in the coming week. Ineos Supremo Ratcliffe had initially lodged a bid for a majority stake in the club. However, with no breakthrough in sight, an adjusted offer for a quarter, believed to be between 1.4 and 1.5 billion pounds, has done the trick. While that figure uh, meets, uh, while that figure meets does not meet, that needs to go through again. Um, that figure meets does not meet the six billion pound valuation that the Glazers were initially thought to have been seeking. It ultimately has proved big enough to get the deal done. The development brings a saga that has been running for almost a year to an end. Should Ratcliffe, originally from Oldham, eventually complete his purchase, it would see a world record figure for a sports franchise. United's deeply unpopular US owners announced last November that they were open to investment or a full sale. Bollocks. Uh, in February, uh, there was blah, blah, blah about the, the Qatari bid. Um, so they're just doing the background of the Qatari bid there. But so again... I was expecting or hoping to maybe see a bit more information as to what was what were the other steps in this full takeover going to be as well, um, because they were suggesting that, OK, it's the first step of a full takeover. OK, what other steps are there then? What are these steps? We're not hearing steps, you know, and just like Step Song, Tragedy, although it was a BG song as well. Um Let's see if the super chats are caught up too. I am caught up with the super chats. I think that's everything covered. As I mentioned, guys, there's going to be a lot more coming about this um, in the, the next hours, in the next days, obviously. As I mentioned, the video is going to be going up shortly uh, from Flex outside of the country, uh, giving his thoughts, his views on this as well. I'm assuming it's probably just the more of the withdrawal from Sheikh Jassim as opposed to the new news that um, Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos's bid for 25% is set to be ratified in the next week or so. Um, and I'm sure more details will come out about that. Of course, if we get any more updates or details regarding what's going on with all of this, uh, of course, we'll be all over it here um, on the channel too. Uh, full view will also be tomorrow as well as I just check my phone to see if we're we're all caught up to um, because it's just it's a, it's a crazy crazy story um, Red Baron says uh, Owen don't leave I still need therapy well you know what I'll also do I'll also do because I this wasn't fair actually because I'll I'll call DJ back because I said I would as well Jesus my phone is blowing up I got uh, a lot of I tell you know when you get the message from all your friends I don't 
<laughs> Do you? You know what I mean? Oh, God. Let's call DJ back. Yes, DJ. Do you have any quotes from Bloomberg as well? <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I haven't got my um, my uh, press pass for that. So ah, no, no ah, I haven't got no. That's a shame. Um, but no, <laughs> but what are your thoughts again? Because when we were last talking, it was more about the uh, the withdrawal of uh, Sheikh Jassim. But now it's actually more the case of uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. That twenty five percent that's going to be ratified in in the coming in the next week, and it looks like that's yeah. that's where we're going. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know what? I, I think it's just sort of pit, pittance, really. Um, if that's even going to ever come to fruition under the Glazers, uh, I very much doubt it. I think I think Sergium just wants a piece of the pie. I think you know he's being pushed out from Nice. Um, a lot of people are saying that in the in the comments as well. Um, so it just goes to show you kind of you know what his sort of motivation is at the moment. I think he just doesn't want to be proved a failure. Obviously, he's a British boy, so acquiring Manchester United. Um, would be, you know, a really big steal for his portfolio, but also his reputation. But in terms of what he wants to do for the club, we never really got any kind of clear, clear indication of what he, where he wanted the club to go and what he wanted to do. So that 25%, um, it remains to be seen, I guess. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. But I think you said something that is really, really correct there, where you said, you know, he needs to be very, very careful who he's getting into bed with right now because... <laughs> The Glazers haven't exactly proven to be the most trustworthy of owners, have they? So yeah. no, and that's and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for all this stuff when they're saying, you know, it's the first step of a full takeover. I'm going cool because uh, let's be honest. I mean, anyone get anyone can get behind the Glazers leaving, regardless of who it comes yeah. in. I mean, obviously to a, to an extent, but everyone can get behind that. But I'm not seeing any steps. I mean, unless they come out and they say, oh, yeah, but we've got this and this year. This has been written. This has been written down, black and white, on paper, signed, legal. Lawyers have looked over it and they say, you know, 2024, we're going to buy this amount. 2025, we're going to buy this amount. I would still be like, well, it doesn't really do us much in the immediate future, yeah. but at least there's light at the end of the tunnel. But if it's just we've bought we, we've bought in, it's like a game of poker. Oh, you've bought in, right? You're going to win the jackpot. Well, I don't know. There's plenty of cards to be played. <laughs> Well, that's a gas. That's a massive game of chance. Then what, yeah, they're, they're, exactly. they're, what they're really playing there, and I don't see. And again, and 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 this is the thing too. None of this is to the benefit. N none of this is the benefit to the benefit of Man United, is it? Realistically, yeah, it's not. It's, it's just not, about money. It's yeah, it's definitely about money, and I and I think why. Um, look, there, there'll be there'll be a lot of fans that want to shake their team just because of the sheer financial power that you know the Qatari group had, and I won't I won't lie to you. I was looking at that like, yeah, that's going to put us back on top. That's going to put us to be able to compete with the Man City, to compete with the Newcastles, compete with Real Madrid, etc. And I thought, yeah, brilliant. But then when you actually saw kind of what the Qataris wanted to do, so it wasn't just like, yeah, we're going to just buy Manchester United, but they actually had a, had a little plan. They had a little message to the fans to say, we're trying to, you know, buy 100% of the club. We're going to invest in the men's team, the women's team. We're going to invest in, uh, you know, building up Old Trafford again or maybe scrapping it and getting a brand new ground. And we're going to invest in the first team, invest in the academy. That is everything that we wanted to hear. But with Sir Jim, we never heard any of that. It was just something along the lines of, um, you know, I don't know, something about being a British club, I couldn't even remember. But it, it, it's just really a dark, dark day for, for us United fans and, Flex alluded to other things going on in the world and, you know, we fully, fully understand that and, and we sympathise with all of that stuff. But just in a terms of a pure footballing basis, like, this is this is heartbreaking because the reality is, Owen, like, if Sir Jim comes in and he isn't isn't the man that he's portraying to be in terms of he wants to do well for Manchester United and, and, and put the club first and, and us fans and, you know, make us fans want to, you know, champion him as one of those um, investors, then... The reality is we're going to be doomed for a further 15, 20 years. It, it literally feels we're being oppressed under this tyrannical rule of the Glazers. Well, and also it's as well, horrible. also as well. So great, you've Sir, Sir Jim, you've spent 1.5 billion. You've got a seat at the table now, but you're not the head of the table. You're not the one making the decisions. You've you've paid your money to put your hand up and say, well, I, exactly. I, I think this. And I'll go, thanks for that, Jim. But we're not gonna we're gonna go in a different direction because we've still got total control. I think very very quickly. And again, unless they've got some kind of stuff written down about eventually at this point we're gonna buy this, buy this, buy this, and buy this from you. Unless they've got that, 
written down that I think they'd probably figure out very, very quickly that actually this was all for nothing. We just did, we yeah. did this so we could win. Great. You, you, you won. You won. You, you, you beat, you beat Qatar. Good for you. But at what price? What did you have yeah. to, what did you have to do to beat Qatar? Part with $1.5 billion and also swallow your pride at the same time because you're not making yeah. any calls for all of those reports that come out going, oh, Ineos, they want Paul Mitchell to come in. I'll be picking up the phone to Paul now going, uh, you know, if I was Paul, picks up the phone. So, Jim, I hear that you've won the race. Am I going to be coming in? I've got to check with the boss first. The boss? Exactly. I thought you were the boss. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I still got to check with Joel. Oh, when are you going to be able to get a hold of him? Well, he's working on American time. He's very difficult to get a hold of in the day, you know, and also as well, he's, he's still, he's been keeping Martial at the club for all of these years because he reminds him of Pele. Remember that story? Oh, no, right. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I, I think it's just very, very spiteful from the Glazers in a sense. So look, they are businessmen. They're entitled to kind of get, you know, the money that for the club that they own. But come on, like, it, you, you, had, you had the Qataris in there putting around about 5.5, 5.4, 5.3, around those numbers, astronomical numbers for 100% of the club. And that was going to be for the benefit of, one, the fans, but also the club and the growth of Manchester United and the brand, plus the football and, and its development and its further development into, you know, the 2020, 23 plus. But now it's just like, where do we go from here? Like, there, there doesn't seem to be any sort of upside to uh, Sir Jim coming in. And it, maybe, well, not even maybe, I guess there's going to be certain particulars in the deal in terms of what he can can, can contrib contribute to and what he can have say over it. But you're right, the, the buck does end with the Glazers. Ultimately, it just ends with the Glazers. Sir Jim could have the best um, intentions for Manchester United and he could come on into Manchester United and have, you know, um, ideas about how he wants to, you know, you know the club to progress. And the Glazers could be like, as you said, right, yeah, we hear you, but um, nah, we're going to go our way. Yeah. And that is, again, that that is even more disgusting. That's even more disgusting because you have someone there that potentially wants to do great for the club, but you're just not going to listen to them anyway. So, yeah, it, just buckle up. Everybody that's here today, buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride. It is going to be a really bumpy ride. Imagine we've having been, the we've nerve. We've been put through the ring up, Owen. We've been put through the ring up. We oh. have. We've literally put through the ring up. And imagine having the nerve to say... I want to put the Manchester back in Manchester United, and I want to have yeah, an a, a that's, fan, that's what it was, yeah. a fan centric approach to uh, to uh, to. I want a fan centric approach to football ownership. I remember a British backed bid. That was the other buzz, too, wasn't yeah. it? It's a British backed bid. Who's it backed by? The American owners, the Glazers, <laughs> who I'm going to report into. Very British is what's exactly. going on. Again, like, exactly. that's why. They, and when that stuff came out at the time, and people were pushed back on it, people said, "Well." Don't turn your nose up at that. Come on. But you see, if what it was, it's all horse shit. And also yeah, as well, yeah. you see uh, Sheikh Jassim, and again, it's not even about the Qatari thing or the Middle Eastern thing or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. What it really was about is he said, he, he put his price out to the Glazers and also said what he was willing to invest after they'd gone. I'm going to do it at the yeah. stadium. I'm going to do it at the training ground. I'm going to buy players. I'm going to invest in your academy. I'm going to make the women's team the best women's team in the world. What, what are Ineos going to do? Uh, with the money that we didn't spend from getting the 69%, they're going to put that into United? Would you trust them to put yeah, that into United? Would. You know, would you, yeah, would, you would. would you trust, be, would you be willing to give your money? You only, you only own 25%. Are you willing to put your money in and actually put it in the hands of people that have mismanaged Manchester United for two decades? Like, would yeah. you be willing to do that? That's just bad business. Yeah, very, very bad business. And I, I just, my, my fear is that Sheikh Jashim literally and, and the Qatari bid like, that bid literally encompassed what every Manchester United fan not every but most United fans w would want from, from an owner coming into Manchester United especially because we've been mismanaged for 15, 17 years whatever it is and now I just think that that was our best shot of being sold to actual people that actually wanted to do right by the club. I don't think that chance is going to come around anymore, especially after this fallout. Nobody's going to want to get close and get near to Manchester United, even come close and do business with the Glazers, because for practically, we'll, we'll call it a year, we might as well round it up, we'll call it a year. For a whole year, literally, Qatar, and even so Jim at points have just been left hanging, just been left hanging with no moving on this at all. And... Yeah, it is. It's heartbreaking, man. It's heartbreaking. It is indeed. Well, I appreciate you calling in, DJ, on a Saturday. You know, I saw a lot of people saying today that um, international break meant, meant uh, United can't ruin my Saturday. They found a way.
Yep, yeah, exactly. You know, it's and you know what I just want to say to everybody in the community. Being a United fan is tough. And for us to, you know, make sure this content comes to you on time, you know, at match days, you know, in international breaks, end of the season, it's tough, especially because we're emotionally invested in this club, but we do it for the love of the community. So, yeah, man, um, big up everyone in the chat and big up your cell phone. Yeah, big up DJ. Appreciate it. Peace. There's DJ. I'm drained, guys, man. I'm just, oh. You know, I'm one of these people... This is a this is a bit of an insight, yeah. I'm one of those these people that when it comes to like bad news or negative news, I never like I never like uh, immediately like process it. I'm one of those people that will be it will take like a few hours or it will take like a few days, and then I'll be like shit, like you know, you know what I mean. And that's what it's kind of like with this. You realise that you've been, all of us, all of us fans have been clinging on to hope for a year. And as time went on, you know, that cling, we were clinging to it, our fingers were getting pried from it like this. But we still kept trying to believe. Every single time Rio Ferdinand stepped out on a train platform, every single time people started translating Qatari newspapers, every single time people started searching companies' house, it wasn't because of a chase for Middle Eastern wealth. It wasn't because of a chase to go, I want to be state-backed. It was a chase of hope, is what it really was. It was hope that actually this is this is coming to an end. And then to get to the end of it and be like, actually, bang, bang, wake up, you idiot. Nothing's changing. You, th you think something's changing? You know? You, you had the nerve to have some hope. You had the nerve to believe. And And even when this poor start to the season too, even with the start to the season, the way that it's been, there was kind of this feeling, wasn't there, of, yeah, but, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's takeover stuff's looming over, but this will be sorted, you know. we Just one more season, get through it, or one more sort of half season, get through it, and then, then it will be sorted. Then this whole thing will be resolved. You've got David Beckham coming out, I know the right people for the job, blah, 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 and then it is going to be resolved, and it's going to be no different. Not at all. We'll still have more years of Glazonomics. We'll still have more years of, you know, madness. And it doesn't come from a point of, I realize I'm very, very fortunate. The, the era that I grew up in of a, a Manchester United fandom, when I grew up as a kid, yeah, United won everything. And I know that's not sustainable and it doesn't work like that. And I'm very, very lucky because I talked to my, my dad and my granddad, you know, try to support United like through like the 70s and 80s. And they didn't win that much you know, and they won an FA Cup here and there. They were still a good team and they still had heart. That's the key thing. They still had heart. You talk to anyone that's in their 40s or their 50s or their 60s or 70s or 80s and 90s. Yeah, they'll always say, you know, throughout the tough times, Man United have heart. And uh, it's just, it's felt like for two decades, sort of the heart's gradually been ripped out of United. And it has nothing to do with being successful or anything like that. Um, it's about have uh, the, the club having heart and the club having soul. And to feel that be sort of gradually stripped away, that's the really upsetting thing. And I know that like a lot, not a lot of fans will realise that and maybe some younger fans just want United to win all the time or they just want United to win every trophy and be successful. But it's about more than that. And uh, and that's the shame. That's the shame and that's, that's where we are. Uh, let me get these super chats and then we'll uh, wrap things up. Um, uh, it's just Danny says oh and we're grateful for you today is a bad day appreciate everyone that has tuned in it's been we've well, been live for an hour and a half um, it's feel, if, 90 minutes it feel like I've run 90 minutes if only uh, if I ran 90 minutes oh my god you'd see it I'd be red in the face and probably you know being I don't know I'd be on like oxygen or whatever Lil Yo, -Yo says uh, how do you bring Manchester, United, Manchester back to Man United with 25% don't forget the reports on how he would acquire the club um, fully time will tell flipping rats uh, K-Flow says uh, a quick look at Nice says it all Jim is a fraud um, Sham says uh, Sham says uh, kudos to United though they were able to ruin yet another Saturday for me I was happy India beat Pakistan and now this idiots yes yes indeed um, Andy says, oh, and one positive is the takeover saga is done. Now rest. Uh, it's not a positive, though, is it? You know, I'd rather it be ongoing so that there was hope. You know, I'd rather there was be, uh, 
Ongoing. Um, NCX says, Owen, use a little logic here. Uh, do you think a savvy billionaire would put up 1.5 billion without commitments and assurance of uh, overall control in the agreements? Come on, man. Um, well, I would hope so. I would hope so. But we're not seeing any. That's the problem. We're not seeing any assurances. As I've said, if if it comes up that there's assurances, then you'd go, wow, that's how he won. But we haven't seen that been reported. And even if that is the case, are we saying that savvy businessmen in the Glazers, because make no mistake, they're very savvy businessmen. You know, they turned down double what the club was worth and they didn't even really buy it for any money. It was inherited from their father as well. Do you think they're savvy businessmen as well? Do you think they would not give themselves any wiggle room? Do you think they would let, you know, this, uh, this guy buy 25% for 1.5 billion and go, we're going to be rigid for the prices that we're going to get over the next however many years? You think they wouldn't find some ability to manoeuvre in that? I will throw it back to you. Come on, man. That's the worry. That's the ambiguity involved in all of this. It's all very ambiguous right now. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and I'm caught up. I'm caught up. Anyway, guys, um, thank you very much for joining us. As I mentioned, there will be um, a reaction from uh, Flex coming up in... Uh, probably the next, I would think, hour or so. Um, this is developing, so if there is any more news or any more um, updates regarding all of this as well, uh, I'll be here, I'll be live once again, uh, and we'll post um, some, uh, some, some, some videos about it. Um, obviously, it's going to be all over social media too. So stay tuned, stay tuned, because uh, hopefully we haven't heard the end of this. Hopefully we haven't heard the end. Anyway, guys, have a good Saturday. Try and enjoy yourself. Yeah, and I'll speak for you again very soon. Peace.